मैं जब बोलूँ वालों तभी करेगा ठीक है A very good morning, dear student. I'm Akansha Tiagi and working as academic counselor within IGNU. And I'm taking your subject in human resource development. The subject code for which is MMP02. So let's begin. Dear student, as you're aware, the syllabus of human resource development is divided into four blocks. And these blocks are block number one is introduction to HRD. The block number two is managing HRD. The three is HRD in practice. And block number four is experiences and trends in HRD. And these blocks have been divided into 12 units. And my dear student, up till now, we have covered till unit number nine. Today, we'll be talking about unit number 10, 11, and 12. Here, we, are, we will be covering HRD and industry relations, Emerging trends and perspectives in HRD and HRD experiences. So, without wasting time, let's begin. Fine. Uh, HRD in industrial relationship. Dear student, if we talk about traditional industrial relation in India, it is equated with collective bargaining, labor legislation or labor laws, problems, and industry. And the terms which are used in industrial relation are collective bargaining, conflict management, power, legislation, legitimation, etc. And the conflicts or indiscipline is the result of unanticipated business decision. So the new concept of HRM, which is HRD and OD, have pre-assembled in themselves the assumptions which are there to remove these conflict and indiscipline within the organization. So the HRD and industrial relation 
which is an emerging fo a function of HRM, pre, pre address itself to the problem of individual motivation, development of terms, conflict resolution strategies, development aspects of organization relationship. But it is very unfortunate that both the researchers in the area of HRD and IR uh, take it from a different perspective. They do not intermingle and they have separate researchers for HRD and IR. And because of this, it is considered as a different function and there has been a little attempt both by academician and practitioners to see the relevance of HRD to manage the IR function in proactive manner. But today the approach has changed and we'll be talking about at the end of the class about the integrated aspect of HRD or D with industrial research. Fine. So industrial relation research focuses on collective bargaining and unions and has been dominated by legal, social, institutional and neo-economic perspective. Collective bargaining is a process of negotiation between the labor and the management. And generally, the industrial relation ensures three parties into it, the employer, the employer, and the trade unions. Trade unions are nothing. These are the representative of the workers. They are there to fight for the right of the workers within the organization. Whereas, in contrast, HRD is dominated by researchers in the area of industrial psychology, organization behavior, which focuses on individual, group, organization as a principal unit of analysis. Dear student, the focus of industrial psychology is on why and how people behave within the organization. When I say why and how people behave within the organization, it deals with the psychological aspect of a human being, which is their motivation, the learning, their attitude, their personality, and the perception. Whereas, organizational behavior looks at the organization from three points of view, that is individual, team, and organization. It is the individual which makes the team and teams make the organization. So this is the basis difference between industrial relation and HRD and how research are being done in the uh, both the areas. Fine. So the difference in orientation between industrial relation and human resource management scholars results in dearth of studies integrating the impact of collective bargaining and union with multiple function of human resource management. And that's why we say that these are not different aspects of human resource management, but these two are the integral part of HRM. And we will be talking about it in the slides to come. Fine. So let's talk about the difference between industrial relation and HRD and uh, the orientation of industrial relation is from economic, sociology, and laws point of view. Law, the legislation of the country, economy, the buying and selling pattern of the consumer, and the society, uh, the norms, the culture, are the founding stone of the subject called industrial relation. Whereas the roots of HRD and organizational development like in psychology and organization behavior where the principal unit of analysis is human being within the organization industrial relation deals with firefighting orientation firefighting means there's a conflict there's a dispute there's a strike in the organization and now once it has happened you are trying to find out the cause of the problem and trying to provide the solution whereas hr focuses on Collaborative problem solving orientation. You, along with your people, will decide your objective, will work upon them, and this is how you will minimize the indiscipline or the disputes or the conflict within the organization. Third, it says the perspective of industrial relation is short term, whereas HR has long term approach. If we talk about the views about the relationship, 
in industrial relation it is mainly economical i am getting work done and i am getting money in the form of wages and salaries out of it so the relationship is economical whereas in in a human resource development and organizational development the relationship is economical as well as psychological obviously you are spending your time money and effort you have to be paid in terms of salary and wages but this is not it here we talk about the employee motivation employee engagement the enthusiasm an employee puts in the job so this is the difference between industrial relation and hr next difference is change constrained by legal and other external factor it mean to say that from industrial relationship perspective will bring in a change in an organization if there is a change in the law or any external environmental factor maybe political legal social and so and so forth but whereas in hrd human resource development and organizational development we are proactive we anticipate anticipate the change and that's why main focus is on internal factors for managing the change next point of difference is this that hrd is mainly compliance uh, we are managing the compliances compliances or what these are the well set rules regulation and laws we are just following those laws whereas in hrd we work on commitment build uh, if you remember in the initial classes we talked about three c's under hrd that that was competency culture and commitment if you are developing your people and providing them a culture of development they will be committed to your organization next point of difference is conflict at the core of industrial relation and is considered as unhealthy conflict is not all, always a physical hustle between two people if two people doesn't agree on one point of view then again that this can be called as conflict if we talk about traditional industrial relation approach the conflict was taken as negative but the modern approach to conflict says that it is necessary for the growth of the organization but the conflict shall be manageable so hrd says conflict need not to be counter protective and can be managed because the modern point of view says if there is no conflict within the organization the group work grow it will look like a stagnant water which gets rotten over a period of time now i am focusing on a pluralistic framework of reference collaboration collectiveness whereas hr works on unitary framework of reference which means rather than uh, knowing what it is the importance of something is uh, considered under hr in ir it seeks power advantages for bargaining and computation obviously you are heading the organization you have positional power and people used to take advantage out of that positional power whereas in hr we seek power equalization for trust and collaboration we focus it on team work rather than on hierarchy when we talked about hr in ir we try to make most of available human resources maximum amount of people whereas we are not only utilizing people when we talk about hr but our focus is also on developing the present as well as future potential of our people fine and if we talk about the rewards under industrial relation the emphasis is on external rewards to motivate and to get the commitment from the people whereas the focus of hrd is on internal motivation people shall be self motivated and self directed when we talk about hr and in ir values defined by practice what do you do but in hrd we already have explicit statement of value in the form of strategic intent that is your vision mission and goals of the organization fine so as we talked about the differences between industrial relation 
and human resource development and we also talk from research point of view now let's talk about the definition of hrd and here we are taking the reference of dullo definition he says that at any one time in its development industrial relation is regarded as comprised of certain actors certain context and ideology which binds the ir system dear student he is very pioneer in the area of industrial relation and when he is talking about certain actors according to him there are three agents or the actors in industrial relation these are employees the management and the government and the context is talking about the external and internal environmental factor external environment can be described by the term called pester the political social technological and uh, economical and legal environment and internal environment is your own people process product policy so and so forth so according to him it is combination of actors and certain context and the ideology of the top level management that is binding the industrial relation system but the dullock and flanders who were the core founder of the industrial relation system omits behavioral variables such as human motivation perception and attitude their focus was more on the organizational point of view or macro factor of the organization they somehow ignore the individual or the people dimension within the organization and to add into it bain and clark in the year 1974 have argued that behavioral variables like your motivation personality perception attitude and learning cannot be dismissed while studying the industrial relation and from here the importance of hrd that is human resource development arose in managing the industrial relations right in the previous slide we have talked about the definition of industrial relation now let's talk about the definition of human resource development dear student the hrd is mainly concerned with developing the competencies amongst the organizational processes when we talk about competencies competencies means knowledge skill ability attitude of the people and here we are talking about technical managerial and behavioral competency of the people now let's talk about the definition given by rao in the year 1981 he says that hr is a process by which employees of an organization are helped in a continuous and planned way to acquire or sustain or sharpen the capabilities develop their general capabilities as an individual and exploit their inner potential and develop an organizational culture which foster team work and collaboration so in hr we are not looking from the macro point of view we are talking about the micro unit of the organization that is our individual first we are helping the individual to develop their capabilities then by how, by how can we develop the capabilities by providing them the development culture and we are not developing them for the present role but we are also developing them for the potential future role which they are capable of performing in the time to come and here our focus is on team work and collaboration so this is the difference between industrial relation and human resource development and we talk about development right hrd focuses on developing people but how they do it they do it with the help of certain sub system or the mechanism and these mechanisms are performance appraisal potential appraisal training and development feedback rewards counseling organizational development employee welfare and quality of work life so on so forth. now 
dear student let's talk about how hrd is linked to ir industrial relation right uh, here we'll be talking about hrd that is human resource development od which is organizational development and ir is industrial relation how they three are so hr approach focuses on developing human resource competencies through motivation organizational culture whereas od can be taken as the subsystem of hr and it can also be taken as a separate aspect of human resource management so if od is considered as a part of human resource development it focuses on systematic and planned interventions to build human process competencies for the growth development and vitality of an organization but if you are treating organization development as an independent function it covers a large canvas of attempting to help the organizational development in various ways using a variety of intervention like structural change technological change strategic shift and human process changes etc etc structural change you are bringing in change in the organizational structure earlier your organization structure was tall it was having too many layers of hierarchy now if you have to be prompt in decision making you cannot afford to have taller organization structure you have to minimize the hierarchical chain and whenever there is a change people create a ruckus on this so how you do it you do it with the help of the interventions of organization development ecological change right uh, there is a lot of debate on industry 4.0 and 5.0 right and because there is a change in the external environment your organization cannot keep the eyes closed all right but how will you inculcate the change that depends on the, again the interventions of organizational development all right i believe what is hrd what it do what is ord or organizational development as a sub, sub system of hrd or as a separate system is clearly now let's talk about industrial relation it is a specialized function that evolved to protect interest of organization as well as that of the working class dear student industrial relation or employee relation is that function of human resource management that ensure peace within the organization peace is essential for the coordinate functioning of the organization and why we are talking about peace because it try to minimize the conflict and indiscipline within the organization so it not only protect the right of the worker but also of the organization fine the primary focus of hrd is on people the human being or the human resource of the organization whereas the primary focus of organization development is on organizational capabilities whereas the primary focus of industrial relation is on protection of the interest of labor and the management in the balanced way through negotiation and collective bargaining all of them involve dealing with the people human is the focal point of whether it is hrd od or ir or e and they focus on people whether as an individual unit group or the organization so the hrd the focus is on each and every individual within the organization and enhancing their capabilities and potential and this is how motivating them and making them more committed towards the organization whereas organization development the focus is team and the organization as a whole whereas ir focuses on union management labor management so for industrial relation uh, there are various actors the actors are the workers the management and the external parties like trade union are involved 
तो इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन नॉट ओनली इंश्योर्स पीस विद इन योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट एस दी नेम सेल्स इस ट्राइ टू इंश्योर दी पीस बिटवीन दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ वन पर्टिकुलर इंडस्ट्री टू सो इट मेक्स अ कोऑर्डिनेट रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एम्प्लॉय एम्प्लॉय � Although the focal point differs due to the philosophy and the purpose of each of these function, but the dynamics of human processes are similar. There's a lot that HRD OD can contribute to industrial pollution. But we have to change the orientation. We have to bring a modern orientation to the traditional industrial relation functions. Now, you must be wondering why we need to change the industrial relation aspect. So, from there the pressure is coming. So, pressure for change, need for integration of HRD and IR uh, is this, will be discussed now. We will be discussing it point by point. Point number one says the emerging of, emergence of new technology and march towards computerization is creating new pressure on the management as well as Dear student, you must be knowing that in today's time, we are talking about automation and artificial intelligence. There's a lot of debate on industry 4.0 and 5.0. And there's a fear and the anxiety among everybody who is employed. Will we be replaced? You must be aware that in Kerala, the first teacher who is teaching maths has been appointed. And the teacher is? Uh, not a human being, but a, somebody who is having inculcation of artificial intelligence. So, if you have to win a race, you have to bring in a change. The technological change is first the primary mover, where which forces the IR aspect to integrate HRDR. Second point says the new workers are causing anxiety to both management and the human. To the management because it is driven by self-interest, impatient, and it bothers a little about traditional authority. Gen Z, right? Uh, they don't want to work for one particular organization throughout their life. The emerging concept like flexi working, gig economy. And within the change in the generation, you have to bring in the change into your traditional industrial relationship system. Third, the futility of legislatory mechanism is now not appreciated by both by management and union. Why? Because it's a delay in problem solving, mistrust, and the cost of legislatory process is very huge. Now, the fourth point, which is forcing the industrial relation to integrate with HRD is innovation innovative personal policies and quality of work life program practiced by many organizations and their impact on improve business performance if you're doing work work life balance work life integration program surely the outcomes are more so if other organizations are doing it because you are living in a competitive era you also need to do the same Last, the pressure from the government for workers' participation in management. The, art, the Constitution of India is having an article number 43A, which forces the organization to involve workers into decision making. And this is what we are calling as it as workers' participation in management. So these are the factors which are forcing the organizations to integrate the industrial relationship with human resource development. Fine. Now we'll be talking about the development approaches to industrial relationship. And these are having two dimensions. First is competency building and second is development of process which is fostering our octopus. So, competency building is the major factor in the industrial nation like management, union and government. 
As we told you in the starting of the class, our three apples may be talked about industry relation. So when it comes to competency building, you not only need to develop the competency of the people who are working at the show floor, who we are calling it, it as a worker or the labor. But under HRD, you have to develop the top level management also, the middle people also, and the workers also. And along with this, you need to develop the union as well as key government officials. And this development will help them to know the policies, the process, the technical know-how, the leadership competencies, and the managerial competencies. Maybe the way they were managing the organization earlier may not be required in today's time. Because uh, almost every external environment factor is different. All right. So here comes the importance of competency. And under development process, we are fostering octopus. Now what this octopus stands for? Here O stands for openness. Openness means open to communicate. If somebody and this openness shall be not only from top to bottom, but also from bottom to if you are lower level people are having or facing some problem, you should be open to the problem. You should also be open to their suggestion or solution. Here C stands for collaboration. Together, we will attain the goal. Synergy. Right? We are talking about teamwork in, when we are talking about HRD and its integration in industrial trust. I keep telling you people all the time, the trust comes with time. But if you trust, trust is very essential to talk about in this relation. The workers have to trust the management and management has to trust the workers. Then, then only we can minimize the conflict, the gearhouse, the dharnas, and certain other industrial schools. All right. Autonomy. Consider your workers as worth it. And Give them freedom of decision. Proactive. To this company, you cannot respond. You have to be authenticity. Let give them freedom of doing the task. You shall be concerned with the mean or the end result. But when you are given the freedom, then also ensure that if the, the task is done in an authentic way or the legitimate or legal. Keep in mind business ethics. Confrontation. Consider you people capable enough that if they are facing some problem, they can solve it on their own. It will help you in prompt decision making. Experimentation. Let your people think out of the box. If they are thinking out of the box, then only new innovative ideas can so this is how you are using development approaches to industrial relationship. Now, how can we link uh, the practical implication of HRD and organizational development interventions in industrial relation? Suppose the industrial relation problem is of alternation of employee. You have to redeploy them. You have to reallocate the task of them. So possible interventions can be, you have to provide the training, you have to take them to personal growth lab, you have to redesign their work, you have to enrich the job, maybe you have to add autonomy, decision making, uh, power in the existing job profile. Role efficacy, the effectiveness of the role. So these can be the possible HRD intervention when we are talking about the problem of alternation of There can be some problem like lack of collaboration between management and union. Because traditionally both are opposite, uh, they both are considered to be opposite parties. Now what HRD will do? They will conduct a team building seminar or role negotiation exercise. By this, both the party will be able to understand the different 
of both management and unions and they will be in a better position of employee. Next problem can be sense of powerlessness in the management because when we talk about industrial nature, there are certain parties like trade union and government has a role to play. At times, management can also have a sense of powerlessness. And again, you have to provide the leadership training and role efficacy. The importance of the role, the effectiveness of the role. Fine. There can be a problem of mistrust between management and union. Now, what HRD will do? They will conduct a survey research and union and management interfaces. They will understand it from union and management's perspective. There can be a problem of policy of appeasement that you have to restore the conflict match. There can be a problem of failure of forming mechanism for, mechanism for worker. Now, what can HR do? They can go for union management interface, review the workshops, renewable of the exercise. There can be other problem like problem of discipline. Then what HRT will do? They will schedule the counseling session. They will review the disciplinary actions mechanism. Is there any fault? If there's a fault, you have to change your existing disciplinary mechanism. You have to look into the policy statement on discipline. Keeping and changing the time, do you need to change it? If so, you have to do it. And you can also again design the training. There can again be higher problem like lack of knowledge about rules and regulation. At times, workers are not aware of it. Maybe they are not very skilled, not this much educated. Now, the role of HRD is training them and communication system design. Another problem can be delay in personal decision making. So, what HRD can do? They can research for identifying the causes of delay in decision making. Structured interventions like recognition of personal function, development of personal self renewal exercise, survey and feedback and solve this problem. And there can be a problem of reactive attitude of union. You bring in a change, they will go for strike, dhanas and get outs. Fine. So HRD can go for feedback, personal growth and liberty. This is how HRD and organizational development interventions can help you in solving industrial relation problems in the organization. Now, we'll be talking about prerequisite for a successful human resource development, organizational development approaches to industrial relationship. The management must make clear the policies, the philosophies, and value underlying its action. First, you shall know what you want your people to do. If you're clear with what you want from your people, then only it will be easy for you to manage them, minimize the conflict and confusion. And how can you do it? You can do it by making the policy, the philosophy, and the values. Policies can be Policies are actually the guidelines being formulated by the top level management. They are being formulated keeping in mind the philosophy and the value system of your top level management. Policies act as a guiding principle or guidelines for your rest of the managers in the organization. They can be explicit, they can be implicit. They will be expressed or unexpressed. But I suggest it will be good for you that you have your policy in written form. Because if they are in written form, they can minimize the confusion. And if confusion is less, there's high probability that conflict will be. All right. Second is management must establish its credibility. Ensuring the implementation of the agreements. Dear student, trust in the management comes if they do what they say. So, if the management is promising something to the workers and they want to attain a trust from the workers, 
it is essential that they should implement what they have promised. All right. Third says top management style, especially chief executive style, need to be proactive and geared to problem solve. Top level management has to be proactive. They are sitting on the driving seat of the organization. The steering is with their head. So the fortune or the future of the organization depends upon. Fourth, the structure of human resource function must be such that foster the delegation of power and different hierarchy. Delegation means you're passing on some of your power to the people who are working under you. A different level in the hierarchy. They need to know if the power is delegated, power of decision making is delegated. They will not come into you again and again for small, small issues. And it will help the organization and prompt or the easiest, uh, the earliest decision. Manager at all the level must acquire interpersonal skills. Interpersonal skills are the skills which are needed to handle the people within the organization the soft skill the communication the leadership so and so forth if we talk about top level middle level or lower level level within the organization interpersonal skills are equally needed at all the three levels whereas if you talk about the technical skills and conceptual skill technical skills are more needed at the lower level within the organization Whereas conceptual skills are more needed at the top level within the organization. But the interpersonal skills are equally important whether you are at the top level, middle level or lower level within the organization. Next, it is again important, accountability for better human resource management must be established like any other functions. Now, the function of business can be the human resource management, the marketing management, the research and development, the finance. Dear student, in finance and marketing, it is easy to take quantitative decisions. Right? You can easily convert your targets in numbers. You can also see are we able to achieve those targets in number or same happens in finance. You're dealing with money. Money is already in numbers. Here, fixing the accountability is easy. The problem with human resource management or HRD or ID, IR or ER is this. Here, you are dealing with people. And with people, generally, the decisions are qualitative rather than quantitative. But you cannot run away. If you want better excellent practices, you have to convert those qualitative decisions into quantitative decisions. And hence, you have to fix the accountability also. If I'm designing a training and development program, first I have to list down the objective of the program. And after the program, I have to ensure that is I'm able to attain those objectives. For example, objective was to enhance the learning of my student. Right? Imparting them technical know-how. So you have to check it that after the training program, are they able to learn the concept? Are they no technical know-how? So this is how you have to establish the accountability under HRM rules. Next is norms of full day's work. And facilities of union and the representative must be clear. The key responsibilities areas of everybody, whether it is the top level management, the workers, or the trade union shall be fixed. Not only this, the day-to-day -day activity shall also be fixed. So that everybody knows what they have to do and for the, what they are accountable. It says, Open-mindedness and problem-solving attitudes in the trade union leadership are, are vital. So, if somebody is giving you a feedback, if somebody is telling you that you need to improve, right? 
or if you are a top level management somebody who is junior to you is giving you suggestion take it right this is what open mindedness and problem solving attitude says don't react don't respond on it nine recognition on the part of the both management and union that plan organizational change involves joint problem solving and negotiation basically so problem solving is not only the task of hr and top level management everybody has to be involved in it. then only we can minimize the conflict last workers and unions should be prepared to give up restrictive practices and adopt to more flexible rules how can we do it development mechanism for improving industrial relation can be by party meeting by means to and the parties are union are match try to meet try to communicate it can help you in problem so information share at time workers are not clear with the policies technical know how so communicate share the information join survey involve the workers in the surveys too so that they shall not remain suspicious they know the objective of it and they'll be in a better position to collaborate and coordinate the domain of task force these are the specific force for some qualitative initiative in your training your people training is imparting them specific technical knowledge grievance mechanics now what is grievance grievance is any dissatisfaction in the mind of an employee it can be related to the work it may be expressed it may not be expressed it may be factual it may not be factual but if your employee is dissatisfied is unhappy your objective is to resolve that grievance because grievance if not resolved at the right time it can pile up and it can take any shape within the organization and one agreed employee will impact the other employees working here with him or have participated forum where workers and manager management can meet and decide on certain problems and tasks counseling again counseling employee communication tell the people how they're doing hold their hand motivate them through research if there's a problem you need to take a deep dive into it identify the problem and provide the solution okay this is how you can improve the industrial relation now what are the various emerging trends and perspectives when we talk about human resource development and integration with industrial relation business and work Dear student, I keep telling you again and again that none of the organization works in isolation. Every organization is surrounded by the environment, and the environment, the business environment, can be divided into two parts: the external and internal. External environment is again of two types: micro and macro. One is remote, and another one is uh, nearby. All right, an internal environment is within the organization, which is under your control, includes your people, policy, process, project, etc., etc. But the problem with the organization comes because of the external business environment, which can be described as pestle environment. So it encompasses several forces grouped under economic, political, legal. Social, demographical, global, and technology. So we'll be talking about these facets one by one. Economic environment. Majority of the business decisions are impacted by the economic environment. Economic environment means buying pattern of the consumer and the it has. the pricing decision demand and supply all are, all decisions are impacted by the economical environment now political and legal environment so political environment is the political stability of the organization the policies they are making and if the uh, government is 
coalition government. Obviously, it will impact the business. This is. Legal environment means regulatory or legal laws of the land. For example, Maternity Benefit Act. That has been increased by government of India to six months now. Obviously, it will impact your lease policies. POSHA. Again, you have to impart the training. And you work accordingly with the non party Social environment. The society. Again, society plays an important role in business. Right? Every society has its attitude, value system, norms. Which decides the do's and don'ts of the people. So, while framing the policies, while managing your organization, you cannot overlook from the social environment. Demographic environment means the demographic uh, makeup of your population where you are working, the age, the gender, the lifestyle of your people. Technology, right? The technical know how. How input is converted into output and which technology we are using to convert input into output. As I already mentioned, the starting of the class, man is replaced, man is getting replaced by machine. The organizations are going for automation or artificial int intelligence so what is going to be the win-win uh, situation for the people also and for the profit and if everybody around you every organization around you is going for automation and artificial intelligence then again you have to be strategical and thinking when and how you are going to implement those changes in the so this, this is about the business environment. Now, the, there can be other, another management challenges like leadership. A different style of leadership. It varies, although leadership, I'll say it is situational. It varies from organization to organization and industry to industry. But, however, in today's time, you cannot afford to be autocratic. You have to be the participative or free reign decision maker. And it is VUCA word. Here V stands for volatile, U stands for uncertain, C for complex, and A for ambiguous. In today's time, the business environment is VUCA. If you cannot predict what we are doing today, may obsolete become may become obsolete tomorrow. Alright. So changes occurring with such a fast rate. Maybe today I am using R for data analysis and tomorrow it can become obsolete. So you have to be, uh, you have to pull up your socks to, if you have to win the race, right? Shaping company's culture. Culture is determined by values, the practices, the beliefs. And the culture of a nation is different from the organizational culture. <coughs> today, when we are talking about the global economy, integration you have to give respect to each and every culture and in your organization you have to provide the common culture the people from different caste color creed can contribute maximum to your organization tell and manage now baby boomers gen z zen y alpha which is also about to come to your workforce will they working together how are you going to manage them Technology and digitalization. We are putting lots of emphasis on technology because the way we were working the past few years is getting changed today. We are also at the verge of another industrial revolution. So we cannot underestimate the technological change. Now, let's talk about the trends in HRD function. First is job analysis and job test. Job analysis is a detailed study of each and every job. And the outcome of job analysis is job design art, job, job description art, job specifications. Right. Job description tells about what shall be done on the job. The, the tasks, the responsibilities, the working environment, so and so forth. And job specialization talks about the person who will be performing the job. Job design is... Dividing your job into fragments and then redesigning it. The four aspects of job design. Job simplification, job rotation, 
job enlargement and job enrichment. Training and development. Training is imparting the technical know-how. It is for a shorter period of the time. Development is more comprehensive and it is for a longer period of time. Organizational experiences. How your people are responding to your organization culture and planning. Career development, which includes career planning and career management. In today's time, you cannot forget to think about or chalk the career plan for your performance management. It is very systematic way of managing the performance of the people. We do performance analysis, we give the feedback, and you also provide you some sort of training and counseling to the people if your performance is not as up to the human resource information system. Yes, student, in today's time, when technology is a key driver, every organization is keeping the information of its people under human resource information system. It can be in the form of a cloud or website or the portal of the Fine. The HRD experiences. Yes, student, human resource management first start with human resource planning and it helps tell your people in your organization. The comprehensive HRM entails all its functions starting from human resource planning, the process which ensures that are you having right number of right type of people available in the right place. If the answer is no, then you go for recruitment and selection. Recruitment is, to put it into simple terms, is giving the ad about your vacancy. There can be two sources of recruitment, internal and external. Again, it depends on your policy, which one you use. Once you have given the ad, you will get the applica application in the form of CV and resume, and then you will lay down the selection process. Selection process again varies from organization to organization and job to job. At the entry level, selection is simple, but at the, as you move up in the hierarchy, the process becomes complex. When you selected the employee, you will give training and job. Then after a certain period of time, you will review the performance. Is it is it up to the mark or this leg? You have to also match the career planning and development of the people. You have to give them fair remuneration and compensation as well as wages. And all these are what primary function of HR, which directly or indirectly affect the HRD function. Thus, the HRD functions of training development, organizational development, career development, along with coaching, mentoring, relate to the function of HRM. And these are described as HRD experiences. So, HR planning, as I told you, it is a process by which you ensures are you having right number of right type of people available at the right place? The answer can be three, yes, no, or you are at par. If you are at par, you need not to go for recruitment and selection. The answer is no, and you have to go for recruitment and selection. Right. And if you're having excess of people, then you have to go for layoff or retrench. Job description is the outcome of job analysis, which is a written statement about what somebody will be doing on the job. Like what skill they shall know, whom they have to report in the organization when they're working. Recruitment is a positive process by, give, by which you are creating a pool of potential candidate in the organization. Right, as you can see of two people who want at least 100 to 200 applications apply so that you can select the best. Training and development. They are uh, the subsystem of HRD. They are the important or the interventions. Training is for a shorter period of time. We are imparting technical know-how. Development is managerial development, competency development or leadership development. It is for a longer period of time. Compensation includes salary, fringe benefits, other monetary and non-monetary benefits. It is again very strategic decision. It has to be at par. You should ensure equity in that are the people of same skills, same experience are getting equal remuneration. 
if no then you have to your people will leave you soon right you have to deal with the problem of turnover intention diversity management and inclusion right today what has become a global heading to the covid 19 crisis and we say that every cloud has a silver line it has given the opportunity for people from different areas can work for one particular organization it has advantages also and disadvantages diversity means people of different caste color creed and gender are working together when you're dealing with so many differences so you have to minimize the conflict and you have to take advantage of this diversity employee engagement the, the um, engaged employee is more enthusiastic right they give 100 percent to the organization the ready to work beyond the boundaries and ethics, ethics determine do's and don'ts right you have to make a parity between profit and loss and HR analytics you have to use certain softwares like R, Pivot, Python analyzing the actor so this is it dear student resource development as a concept is evolved over a period of time it is the relationship between human resource management and study training emerged for effective utilization of human resource to achieve the goals of the organization so in short i'll say that hrm equals to hra plus hrd plus ir er they all are the integral part of human resource management. So we have to look at them from the integrated point of view rather than considering them as isolated function of HR. So this is it from my end, dear student. Namaste. Happy learning. I hope I'm able to add some value to you. Namaste. See you soon.